this new chapter of your life in which you know how to take every derivative. I can only imagine how much your life has changed for the better. Now you go to the store where you order food online and you go, I know how to take every derivative. I'm just I'm a better person or something. Okay, uh, so I'm recording. Yeah, uh, good morning. Let's talk about the derivative of logarithms. Um, so I'm going to start with something that is almost a reminder of what I did yesterday. which is uh, yesterday I, I found the derivative of, of the logarithm with base e of the natural logarithm. Today, I'm going to do that uh, for the logarithm with any base. So b is uh, constant. And it's going to be it's going to be the same. <clears throat> So um, what did I do yesterday? I wrote y equals this function. And then I changed the equation around a bit to make it into an exponential and not a logarithm. So how do I write this equation as an exponential? Um, what, so my question is the definition of logarithm. What do I mean if I say that the logarithm in base b of x is y? Well, there's a reason I call it the base. Um, just because it's the base of something. So what am I missing there? <clears throat> What's the logarithm in base two of eight? Is this thing on? Hello? It is, it is on. Three, Dustin says three. Dustin is correct. Um, and the reason it is three is because two to the three equals eight, the logarithm is the power you need to raise the base to, to get the, to get the number you're taking the logarithm off. So what number do I need to raise two to to get eight? Uh, the answer is the logarithm, which is three. So the logarithm on ba in base b of x equals y means I'm asking to which power do I need to raise b to get x? The answer is that power, the answer is y. So there you go. Um, so what am I supposed to say? Uh, B to the Y equals X. So um, just like I did yesterday, yesterday I had E to the Y. I'm gonna take derivatives. And then at the um, dy dx that shows up, I'm just going to keep around uh, in order to solve for it. So if I take the derivative of 
both sides, this is what I get. On the left, I have the derivative of an exponential for which I just know the formula. Um, but it's not respect to y, it's respect to x, so I need to do the chain rule. Hope you're noticing that this differentiation, it's sort of confusing, but on the plus side, it's always the same. Uh, you always see some functions of y, and then you realize you can't just take the derivative, you need to do the chain rule. So this is going to be d d b to the y dy times dy dx. This looks like they cancel. So um, well, that is how the chain rule works. Those the d's look like they cancel. And now, um, I want to remember that the derivative of the exponential with base b. Oh, there you go. That's uh, look. I mean, that's not that's not a formula. That's not quite a formula. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to interpret that as as the correct answer. So, well done, Dustin. Uh, the derivative of the exponential is the the same function, the exponential times the constant, which is the logarithm of the base. I remember it's the logarithm of the base because I know uh, if b were to equal e, I would get I would get a one I would, because I, I I really remember that the derivative of the exponential with base e is itself. The problem is knowing this doesn't tell me if the logarithm is multiplying or dividing, uh, which is the reason I don't really remember this often. So this is the derivative of, of the exponential. And dy dx is the thing is the thing I want to compute. So uh, that's the left hand side. On the right hand side, the derivative of x respect to x uh, is one. So putting these together, I simplify both sides. I have the b to the y log of b times y prime equals one. So all I need to do is solve for y prime, which I guess I'll do here. Um, y prime equals one divided by b to the y times the logarithm of b. So um, if you don't want me to turn the page, let us say something now. Like one second. Um, right under where you wrote chain rule, do you have the derivative of by over dx minus? Equals, sorry. Oh. Thank you.
Are you gonna tell me I can turn the page? Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, oh, you were both good. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, so, so this is where we are, uh, and I mean, this is the answer, but I don't, I don't like that it has b to the y there, especially b to the y was x. Um, I started saying why is the logarithm means that b to the y is x. So from the previous page, why is the logarithm base b of x is the same thing as saying b to the y equals x. So uh, here's b to the y. This means that y prime is one over x log b. And that's it. The derivative of the logarithm in base b of x, which is what y was, remember, equals one over x times the logarithm of b. So it's the same thing, it's the same function from, from yesterday. Yesterday I got one over x for the logarithm in base e. Um, and now we got the same up to a constant. If I take logarithm in base e, I get one over x log of e. And log of e is the power to which I need to raise e to get e. Um, and I know what that is. Um, it's one because e to the one is one. So this is just one over x, like, uh, like I concluded yesterday. Any questions? So that's all there is to it. Um, so from now on, you can just use this formula from memory, just like all the other derivative rules. Um, or just, so the, the logarithm here is multiplying, which is dividing, which confuses me because I never remember which one is multiplying and which one is dividing. Um, but what can you do? Um, and I don't know what else to do. I don't know what I meant to say. That's it, just remember this, this formula. So an example, are there questions? The derivative of um, the logarithm, this is an example in the book, x cubed plus one. So um, now it's just a matter of taking this rule and combining it with the other rules we know. And that's it, I mean, doing that, you can take the derivative of any, any formula you can think of basically. So, um, so what what kind of function is this? Uh, this is a composition of x cubed plus one with the logarithm. First, I do x cubed plus one, and then I take the logarithm of the answer. Um, if I call u equals the inside, then this function is the logarithm of u. And the chain rule says, take the derivative of, take the derivative of the outside respect to the inside and then multiply by the, by the derivative of the inside respect to x. So the derivative of logarithm, uh, you really should know by memory, it's one over u. Uh, 
I think the thing people do remember this, but people get confused with you look at one of x in the logarithm and you don't remember what the derivative of what is. But what you gotta remember is that the derivative of one over x, you can use the chain rule to compute. It's negative one over x squared. Uh, and then I have the derivative of u respect to x. And u is x cubed plus one. So um, well, I just said u is x cubed plus one. And then this is the derivative of a polynomial. So I can do it really quick without without really thinking uh, power rule. So put the exponent, uh, multi multiply by the exponent, and then write one less than the exponent. And then that's it. The x squared divided by x cubed plus one. <clears throat> I said this all there is to it. Are there any questions? All right, I guess I'll. How come you put log u on the other side without subtracting it? I don't understand which other side. Also, recall using u for the variable and the pronoun. Oh, I mean, I don't think there's some, uh, I, mean, I guess there's another side, but I'm just saying, if these two, you know, I'm just re I'm basically coming up with a new name for log of x cubed plus one. So um, if, if these two are equal, that means that anytime I see log of x cubed plus one, I can replace it by u because they're the same. This is, you know, I'm not like taking an, I didn't start with an equation. Uh, I'm just saying, if I know that two things are equal, then their logarithm is equal. I mean, if you like, I took logarithms on both sides. Maybe I could go like this. Um, yeah. I could interchange the sides, but I'm saying these two things are equal, so their logarithms are equal. Does that make sense? All right. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. So um, let's take a derivative of a surprisingly important function, which is the logarithm of the cosine. So this is, um, this is very obvious to be a chain rule because it just looks really looks like this, um, if f is ln and g is cos. Um, so I'm supposed to take, let's see, the derivative of the outside, um, I'm saying derivative of the, of the outside with respect to the, ins uh, to respect to the inside. So I'm treating cosine of x basically as, as if it was a u. Um, and then the end of the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative, so now, I'm supposed to treat cosine of x as basically as if it was a letter. So I'm just taking the derivative of logarithm. 
uh, the derivative of logarithm is one over whatever is inside the logarithm. So wait, 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 I'm doing this in different ways, but you can you can totally just choose the one you like the best and stick to it. Um, like if you like to every time replace the inside by a new letter, you can you can totally do that. Uh, I'm just trying to show you different ways to do the same thing. So you can choose your favorite. And then the derivative of cosine, uh, that's another one that I know by heart. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Um, and now I'm done. Um, negative sine over cosine. Which is negative tangent. <clears throat> okay, um, last example. Well, it's this kind. Maybe I'll do an example later where. Um, the logarithm is outside, is inside. Um, in general, taking the derivative of the logarithm of something, it has a pretty nice formula that we can just figure out right now using the, the chain rule. Uh, all the chain rule, so I'm doing, so I'm doing what I, what I did in the last two examples. If the logarithm on the outside, uh, there's another function on the inside. Let's just, what if I just call it u? So this becomes the derivative of the logarithm of u with respect to x. Um, so, um, Again, I'm using the chain rule. You take the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside, and you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So uh, the derivative of the logarithm is one over x. In this case, logarithm of u gives me one over u. And here, du dx is the derivative of g of x respect to x. So g, in principle, I don't know anything about g, so I'm not going to know anything about g prime. I'm going to run out of space, isn't I? Oh. Okay. I'm allowed to have all, all these regrets with the board. Nope. So, um, like I said, I don't know anything about G, so this is just going to be called G prime. And U is G, so this is, this is G prime divided by G. And this is well, it was pretty immediate from the chain rule, but it does come up over and over again. The derivative of the logarithm of something, of anything, is the derivative of the inside divided by um, by the function. So what Matthew just wrote in the chat, the derivative of logarithm of u is u prime divided by u. I called it g, not u, but it's the same thing. So this is pretty useful. Um, but 
so your call whether to memorize this or not. Um, sometimes this is called the logarithmic derivative because it's the derivative of the logarithm. But anyway, um, nothing more to it. Uh, let's do another example. Let's do uh, the derivative of the square root of the logarithm. Maybe, maybe I'll do the cosine of the logarithm to compare with the logarithm of the cosine. This is a much less important function. So again, um, I can just use the chain rule. And maybe this time uh, I'll do it in my head, like you probably would if you were doing this as homework. Um, this is the derivative of the outside applied to the inside. And I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of log is one over, uh, well, it's not, that's not it. The derivative of log is one over x. So the derivative of the outside applied to the inside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Uh, and this is the answer I got. So the answer is negative sine of log divided by x. Much, much uglier function than tangent. Um, Any questions? All right. Um, so here's an example. Um, Last example. <laughs> this one comes with a lesson. Logarithm. That's the example in the book because otherwise I'm gonna go crazy and make a very a very difficult one. Logarithm of the root of x uh, plus one divided by the root of x minus two. Um, so this derivative um, so how am i going to take this derivative that's the question i'm asking you to which there is more than one possible answer honestly I guess you can put it like, you can make u equal the x plus one over the square root of x minus two, and then use a chain rule, and then take the derivative of the natural log. Uh, All right, great. Log. Let's do that. Uh, so, call, uh, call the inside um, u, and use the chain rule. So this is, um, so now this is the logarithm of u. So just like before, I guess this would be an example of the logarithmic derivative because I'm taking derivative of the logarithm of something. So then you would take derivative of the outside respect to the inside and then derivative of the inside respect to x. And the first part is just one over u. 
um, because I know I know it from memory. At this point, you probably know it too, since it's like the fifth time I use it today. And then we have the derivative of u respect to x. So this is the derivative of uh, well, u was this whole thing. So now I need to take the derivative of this fraction. Um, and the derivative of this fraction, uh, well, it's a fraction. I I should use the I should use the quotient rule. Oh, it's going to be long. Woof. Okay, so the fraction. I'm trying to take the derivative of the root of uh, this whole thing. So the quotient rule. says you got to square the denominator um, and you got to do the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And if you don't write brackets there, you're going to end up uh, making a mess. So, um, well, t i minus i t low is the denominator squared, which uh, is x minus 2. So now I need to take those two derivatives in the numerator. Those two derivatives are, well, root of x minus 2. The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1 because the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of 1 is 0 because it's a constant. And then I have the der derivative of the square root. So that's going to be another chain rule. Um, so that's going to be the derivative of the square root respect to the inside times the derivative of the inside respect to x. So now we're going to um, now we're going to compute those two. So that's um, so the first one derivative of the square root of something respect to that something that's the that's a power rule. I'm taking the derivative of something to the one half, and I. I mean, I know by heart that this is one over two square root. Uh, so, and, and then I'm, I'm x minus two would be u here. And then the derivative of that polynomial respect to x, and that is that is one because the derivative of x is one. The derivative of two is a derivative of a constant, so it's um, so it's zero. And I'm not doing anything to the denominator. Oof, oh my god! So now I'm I'm supposed to um, now I'm supposed to simplify this, or maybe not. Maybe just say I'm done. But I should simplify this. Um, So I, I probably shouldn't have a fraction instead of a fraction because that's, um, that's pretty bad. So I should multiply by that denominator. I'm going to give the one half. I don't care about the one half. I should multiply by that denominator on the top and the bottom, in the top and the bottom. Um, and that means, well, in the in the numerator, I have a sum, so I'm going to distribute that product. So the first term is going to have an x minus two. The second term is going to be x plus one times one half. 
and the denominator is going to cancel with the root of x minus two, and the denominator can't really do anything to it. I should simplify it because I got to use this still. Uh, so this was the derivative. This was the derivative of the of the inside in the in the previous um, in the previous formula because what I was doing was the logarithm of u the derivative was um, one over u times um, the derivative of this whole thing respect to x. So this becomes one over u, uh, so one divided by what u is, and now times, uh, I guess one more step, x minus two, or maybe two more steps. Uh, the numerator is now one half minus uh, one half x minus five halves. Oh my god! So the derivative of the inside um, well, it's this whole thing. I guess I got kind of lucky uh, because this is going to cancel with that. If I'm, I mean, unless I messed up the brackets and the fractions, um, which if I had, uh, this would be hopeless. Uh, and I will, so now I'm done. Uh, and this was, this was long and- I have a question. Reminding. Yeah. Um, did you mean to not put the, x minus two to the second power and the denominator of like at the top part. At the top part here? Like when you're doing quotient room. This step or? All of it. Oh, well here, so, but is that the first place you were talking about? Well, I'm talking about like, you didn't like whenever you were trying to like find the derivative of everything on the top, you didn't do x minus two all to the second power in the denominator. So here, you, you mean you're, you're saying why didn't I write this? Yeah. Well, uh, the reason is that it's supposed to be the derivative of the denominator squared. Sorry, well, it's supposed to be the denominator squared. The denominator has a square root. So when I have the square root and the and the square, what I get is just the, the function. So if I didn't have this square root here, I would have what you're saying, x minus two squared. But since I have it, it's gonna cancel with that square. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, so this was um this was very long. Uh, I probably made a mistake somewhere along the way. Wouldn't be surprised. So was that is that s over two, like one half x minus? Yeah. Should be. Or maybe it isn't. Doesn't matter exactly what it is. The point is that uh, I mean probably isn't because the book has a different answer. Um, okay. I was trying to illustrate that this was very hard. Uh, five halves came from, so let's do this carefully. X minus two minus one half X minus one half. And this is X times one minus one half. And here I have minus two minus one half. So this is, one minus one half 
is one half and this is negative five halves. So this, but, but yeah, who cares? Um, my point with this problem was that sometimes you deal that in your head. Well, the 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 good news for you is that uh, this problem is in the book and it has a different answer. So I probably made a mistake. So uh, was it worth anything doing in my head? Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> But I didn't make a mistake there. I made it before. Anyway, my point with this problem is that sometimes there's more than one way to do a thing, and sometimes it's worth thinking about uh, thinking about which uh, how to do a thing uh, before starting, before heading down the nasty path of the quotient rule. Because this problem, it, it, no, it is the right answer. Sorry, Sydney. Um, If you look in the book, but it's fine because I'm about to find the right answer. If you look in the book, you got a different answer. Doesn't matter because I'm about to do it better. Because um, because a very important thing in life, or at least in math, a very important thing in math is to be as lazy as possible. You don't want to be working um, any more than you have to. And to do this problem, we worked a lot more than we had to. What did I go wrong? I don't know. Oh, wait, I didn't go wrong. Oh, <gasps> wow. Hooray. Oh my God. Wow. So I could pull the one half. I, I didn't, I missed the one half in the book sensor. Wow, we're all heroes today. We did, we deserve an applause that I'm going to give myself right now. Okay, it uh, doesn't matter because this was kind of pointless because I could have done it easier and that means I should have done it easier. Um, so let's try it, let's try it again. Logarithm of x plus one divided by the root of x minus two. So what algebra can I do with, um, to this to make it to make to make me not use the potion rule. There is some there is a bunch of properties of logarithms. Oh, no. Yeah, what was your question? What can I do with this um, to simplify it and make it make me take the derivative a different way? Oh, like instead of the quotient rule? Yeah. Can you make it product rule? Product rule, uh, like like this. Is this what you mean? Um, no, I meant to um it'll be x minus two to the negative one half oh ah. okay so um again you that would work it wouldn't be wrong but i think it would be essentially the same as what i did before i want to do something with the logarithm
What can you do with logarithm and a quotient? What happens when you take uh, a logarithm of a fraction? What is the logarithm in base two of? Well, you know what this is. You don't know the rules of logarithms. Okay, um, I have to tell you, which is very sad for me having to tell you things. That's the power law, Matthew. Um, Matthew wrote the power law in the chat, the, expo the derivative of the exponential. But I don't, I don't see what to do with that right now. What I want to do, so what I want to do is say that the logarithm, so the logarithm of a product is, this, is the sum of the logarithms. And the logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. And uh, differences are much friendlier with derivatives than fractions are. Fractions are super unfriendly with derivatives. The quotient rule objectively sucks. It's the worst rule of all. Um, if you take, um, if, if you decide to use the rule of logarithms, then the logarithm of this quotient is the difference of logarithms. And all of a sudden this is looking way, way friendlier. So friendly that the problem that took me 10 minutes is probably gonna take me, it's definitely gonna take me three because that's how long I have. So the derivative of the logarithm of x plus one minus the logarithm of root of x plus two. I can go even further. Um, actually, yeah, I can go even further because there's a, because taking the logarithm of a, of a square root, I also have a rule for that. The logarithm of a power, when you take the logarithm of power, well, let's just, if multiplication becomes a sum, a power is just multiplying a bunch of times, uh, which means you're summing a bunch of times. And summing a bunch of times is called product, but also, you should know you should know the rules of logarithms. That's um, that's the T. You should know the rules of logarithms. One half uh, log of x plus two. That's right, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, so this is a power of one half, and derivatives are kind of okay with square roots, but they're what they're awesome with is. Uh, with multiplying by a constant. So what I am ending up with here is, is just this, and this is very, very easy. If in even easier, if I remember that the derivative of the logarithm of anything is the derivative divided by the function, or just use the chain rule. But since I just, since we just learned this, let's use it. So the derivative of the logarithm of x plus one is x plus one prime divided by x plus one. And then I have a one half that I don't need to think about, I just keep it there. Did I drop? Yeah. Oh my God, how long ago? It was just like 30 seconds ago. Yeah, okay. at 8.19. So where was I when I dropped? What's the last thing I said? That's your... Oh my God, okay. Um, so if I apply that rule to, uh, if I apply that rule to, to the square root, this is a power of one half. So the one half comes out in front. 
and then the derivative is great with multiplying by a constant. Um, that really requires me to think it. I'll just keep the constant there. So now this derivative, uh, the derivative that I'm taking, is pretty easy, especially if I remember the formula that I just um, that I just learned for the derivative of the logarithm of anything. The derivative of the logarithm of anything is the derivative divided by the function. So derivative of log of x plus one is the derivative of x plus one divided by x plus one. Then this one half, I'm not doing, I'm just keeping there. You just um, taking a derivative and multiplying by a constant commute. And the derivative of x minus two, uh, the log of x minus two is the derivative of x minus two divided by x minus two. So just whatever is inside the log, um, the derivative of that divided by itself. And now these are all just power rules. Derivative of x plus one is one. Derivative of x minus two is also one because the constants there, the constants have derivative zero. Um, and that's it. I'm done. <clears throat> so um, I got an answer that looks different, but it's not it's the same. It's the same answer. It's just um, this one has a common denominator, and this one's this one doesn't. But if you if you give these a common denominator and add them together, you would get the answer. What I just uh, that I you you would see that it's the same answer. Okay, uh, now I'm done. You can ask me questions. Way to go over the bank. <laughs>